Hello, this short talk is intended for medical students and junior residents and other trainees on CT windows, levels and density. What we're talking about here is how radiologists and other physicians look at CT scans on either PACS workstations or on other type of uh, computer digital image interfaces, such as in the patient's medical records. So what we're talking about here is the different ways that radiologists and other physicians view images on either PACS workstations or on other types of digital imaging display, such as within the electronic health record. You may have noticed how we go through a set of CT slices from any one series on a patient's CT scan in several different displays before making our final interpretation. So first of all, there's a couple of things I want to clarify here. The difference between a CT reconstruction versus the different windows that we display the information on. First of all, to talk briefly about reconstructions. So for reconstructions, this is usually done by the technologist, but some of these reconstructions can be done um, by the radiologist on uh, a different workstation sometimes or sometimes within the PACS station. With reconstructions, the technologist takes the raw data and they can reconstruct it in different ways to optimally show different tissues, such as soft tissue reconstruction, a bone reconstruction, a lung reconstruction, various multiplanar reconstructions, um, not only the um, typically displayed sagittal and coronal images, but they can also do them in many oblique planes. And then there are a variety of different 3D reconstructions depending on what information is sought. So we can do a surface reconstruction of the skin surface or the surface of um, bones or other organs. We can do what's called maximal intensity projections or MIPS, and we frequently do these for vascular structures that contain contrast. And then you can do minimal intensity projections when we're actually wanting to look at air within a structure um, such as in the tracheum bronchi or in the colon. For example, here, uh, here are two slices of a patient CT scan. And the technologist has taken the raw image data and applied two different software algorithms to reconstruct the slices through the thorax. On the left, it has been reconstructed with a conventional soft tissue algorithm. And you can see that while you can see the lung parenchyma fairly well, it's a little blurry. Now, both of these are being displayed in the lung windows that we'll talk about in a minute. On the right, the data has been reconstructed using a typical lung algorithm. This is a very crisp and contrasty algorithm, and it gives us very nice resolution. You can see here of these small vessels within the lung parenchyma. This is the same set of data from the same patient, but we're looking a little lower down here in the thorax at the heart. Again, this is the smoother soft tissue reconstruction that the technologist has given us a set of images. And on the right is the same set of data again looking with a soft tissue window for a lung reconstruction. And so you can see as we did in the lung that this is a much grainier, much crisper, much more contrasty appearance to the soft tissue structures. And this is less pleasing for the radiologist's eye to be able to interpret. So we're gonna look at the soft tissues on a soft tissue reconstruction. You see it's smoother, it's a little easier to read. And we're going to look at the lung on the lung reconstruction. On the left here, we have a 3D reconstruction of the pelvis in a patient who has multiple complex pelvic fractures. This image can be rotated and manipulated in various different ways for the orthopedic surgeon to be able to work out uh, what type of surgery they wish to perform. On the right is one of the types of multiplanar reconstructions that technologists can perform for us, in this case, to be able to look at the thoracic aorta. And you can see this doesn't look like a normal anatomy here, but what the technologist has done has laid out the aorta from the heart up here down through the diaphragm. And this is a patient who has an aortic dissection. And this allows us to see just in one single image the plane of that dissection as it comes out from the ascending into the descending aorta. So just to reiterate, reconstructions are done usually by the technologist or by some separate type of software on a different workstation by the radiologist to allow the uh, raw CT data to be manipulated into different projections or different slices 
depending on what our clinical question is. The different windows are the different ways that we can visually display the digital information from any set of CT slices. And there are a wide variety of windows. Um, common windows that are used are lung windows, soft tissue windows, bone windows, brain windows, blood windows, and you may have seen any of these used in your clinical practice. So, for example, this is the same set of axial reconstructions, and it's a soft tissue reconstruction on a patient, and I've got it displayed here in three different ways. This is a soft tissue window, so it's optimized to look at the soft tissues of the mediastinum, a lung window on the bottom left, optimized to look at the lung parenchyma, and then again the same set of data but now displayed on a bone window, which is going to allow us to look at the osseous structures of the thorax. And what you notice here is that we really can't evaluate the lung parenchyma at all on the soft tissue window. We can't evaluate the mediastinum on the lung window. And we really can't evaluate much of anything else other than the bones on the bone window. And this is why for a thoracic abdominal CT scan, the minimum that we're going to use is these three different windows to look through the entire data set. Now I'm going to go on further to describe what I mean by a window and what I mean by a level, but where can we find this information? Well, if you look at the corner of any CT image, um, which corner it's in will depend on what type of CT scanner you have, you will see down somewhere a little W and an L. So this particular CT scan has a window of 1500 and a level of minus 700. Any tissue window is actually a combination of these two values, a window and level, and they're going to vary depending on how the, what the display window is. To understand what these windows and levels values mean and why we use them, we have to go back to some very basic CT physics. So densities of the different tissues on CT are measured in what's called Hounsfield units, which is often abbreviated to HU. I'm going to use a bit of an oversimplification here because it just makes the math a lot easier. So the Hounsfield units range from a value of minus 1,000 to plus 1,000. Now, in actual fact, in modern CT scanners, they can go up to um, plus 4,000 or greater. Um, but for all intents and purposes for um, tissues other than metal, um, nothing's going to be greater than 1,000 Hounsfield units. So let's just concentrate on those. Zero Hounsfield units in the middle here is going to be water. So we have here a potential of 2,000 Hounsfield units across our range of soft tissue densities. As the tissues get denser, they have increasing Hounsfield unit values. So what are some common Hounsfield unit values of soft tissues that we might see on a CT scan of the thorax? So if we drew a region of interest on fat, for example, that's going to be around minus 100 Hounsfield units. If we drew it on air in the lung, that's going to be around minus 800 Hounsfield units. Uh, this is a contrast enhanced CT scan. If we look on muscle, this is probably going to be around 40 to 60. Hounsfield units. If we looked at the density of this intense contrast that's sitting in the aorta here, um, this is going to be ooh, probably one to two hundred Hounsfield units. And then we can look at two different types of bone. We could look at some medullary bone here in the vertebral body. That's uh, probably going to be around uh, 150, say, to 200. And then the dense cortical bone. So we can say here in the posterior facet joints, which is going to be around three to 400 Hounsfield units. So you can see on this one image, we have densities for minus 800 Hounsfield units to 400 Hounsfield units. So what's the problem here? Well, the conventional computer display is going to show 256 different shades of gray for a CT image, but our eye can only detect about a 6% change in grayscale. So let's do the math. So I just said we can detect about a 6% difference in gray shade level. So 6% is 17 shades of gray. 
both shades of grey. Now, if we have 2,000 Hounsfield units that we're trying to display in all in one image, how many Hounsfield units is that per shade of grey? That's going to equal about 8 Hounsfield units per shade of grey. However, I've already said that we can only detect 17 different shades of grey, so 256 shades of grey over 17 times 8 Hounsfield unit per shade of grey originally means that tissues have to differ in density by about 120 Hounsfield units if we're trying to look at this whole 2,000 um, Hounsfield units in one image before we can detect a density difference between them and obviously this is not a helpful number. Uh, the difference in between normal and pathological tissues is m usually much much less than 120 Hounsfield units. So here's a head CT of a patient who has a large a hemorrhage in their right basal ganglia. This was a hypertensive hemorrhage. Now if we looked at the densities on here that fresh hemorrhage there is going to be about 70 Hounsfield units. There's no contrast on this study. The gray matter is going to be about 40 Hounsfield units. The white matter, about 25, 27 Hounsfield units. And the CSF here near water, so that's eight. And then if we had air in the sinuses, um, which we don't have here, but the, we have air outside the patient, and that's about minus 900 Hounsfield units. The very dense bone in the skull is going to be about plus 800 Hounsfield units. So you can see that although there is quite a range of densities on this image between minus 900 Hounsfield units and plus 800, we're actually only interested in a pretty narrow range. We're only actually interested in this image in a fairly narrow range, probably from about 8 for the CSF to um, 70 um, for that area of hemorrhage. And we want to really be focusing on that area to see some very, very small changes in density for potential ischemia in this patient. Now this image here has been shown on a typical brain window, which we'll explain further in a minute. But what about if we tried to look at this image on display that showed all 2,000 Hounsfield units over that 256 shades of grey? This is what that image would look like. As you can see, there is no diagnostic information that could be obtained for it whatsoever. So what we want to do is focus down those 256 shades of grey into a very narrow window or region of Hounsford units which contain the relevant densities for the tissue that we're interested in. And we just can't look at all tissues just with a one window. So, so if we're interested in looking at the brain, which has a very narrow range of densities within the grey, white matter and ventricles, we may be wanting to concentrate our range of densities into a very narrow range here. If we're looking in the abdomen, we might want to be concentrating it into a somewhat larger range of densities right here. So remember that I talked about two figures for every window display. Windows used generically to mean the lung display or the abdominal display or the bone display and so on. There were two values, a W and an L. The, the W stands for window. The window is how many Hounsfield units are displayed within those 256 shades of gray. The L or the level stands for where is this window centered? So let's go back to our graph. So we may have a narrow window, perhaps that window is only 100 Hounsfield units wide, and it's here, so our W might be 100 here. And our level, which is the midpoint, might be centered at 50. A different example might be a window of, say, 1,000. but it has a level that is minus 
500, that's where the center of the window is. You could have the same size window, but you could have it move further up and have a level of plus 500, and it's going to be centered up more towards the osseous range up here, for example. So that would be a window of, window of plus 1,000 and a level of plus 500. Now, when we have a specific window, for example here, we'll come back to that soft tissue window, everything that has a density that is less than that number, bottom number of Hounsfield units is going to be black on the image, and everything that is greater than that top level of the window shown is going to be white. So you really can make very little diagnostic information from these ranges of densities. All of our diagnostic information is going to be concentrated right here. So here is a head CT of a patient who has a subdural hematoma following head trauma. This is, this is displayed on the typical uh, brain window. In this case, this has a uh, window of 70 and a level of 40. So looking on our little Hounsfield unit um, graph from before, this window is centered at level 40 Hounsfield units and it's 70 Hounsfield units wide. That means that anything that is five Hounsfield units or less will look black and anything that is 75 Hounsfield units so half of 70 is 35, centered at 40, so that makes it 75 Hounsfield units, is going to be looking uh, white. So when we look at the image, we can't really distinguish the black of the CSF, which is zero, from the black of the air, which is you know, minus 900 Hounsfield units. They both look the same grayscale. And it's also pretty difficult for us to distinguish the dense blood here which is probably around 75, 80 Hounsfield units for uh, acute blood from the adjacent skull, which is plus seven or 800 uh, Hounsfield units. Here, the image has been just displayed a little bit differently. The window's been made a little bit wider. It's now 90 Hounsfield units. And the level is a little bit different here at uh, 68 Hounsfield units. And now we can distinguish between the density of the skull and the density of the adjacent subdural hemorrhage. So this is called a vascular window, and it's one of the three windows that a radiologist is going to look at any head CT in. They're going to want to look at a bone window for the skull, a brain window to look at the brain parenchyma, and then a vascular window to look for areas of acute hemorrhage close to the skull. This is a commonly used lung window that we use to look at chest CTs. And in this case, the window is 1500 and the level is minus 700. Here's a soft tissue window for looking for at the mediastinum or the abdomen. In this case, we have a window of 400 and a level of plus 40. And in this last case, we have a typical bone window to look at the skeleton. And in this case, the window is 2000 and the level is plus 300. So you can see that these values vary fairly dramatically depending on what tissues we want to look at. And just to reiterate why we do this, we want to concentrate those 256 shades of gray into the range of expected densities within the tissues that we are interested in because our eye can only detect a 6% difference in grayscale. So how do we um, call up these various different display windows to be able to do this? It's obviously going to depend a lot upon the particular um, PAC system or image display system you're using. Um, on this one, you right click. It's going to come up with an option, one of which is window width and measure. Sometimes this is on the toolbar. And then you have these various pre-selected windows that you can choose from. They often have hotkey uh, shortcuts from the keyboard. And then of course you can just manually adjust these by usually doing a left click drag on the mouse, sometimes it's a right click depending on your particular system. 
depending on your system, moving it forwards and backwards might change the window, and moving it from side to side may change the level that may um, flip on the different systems, but effectively what we do as radiologists is we push the button and we wiggle it around till the image looks okay. So just to summarize, reconstructions are different from windows. Reconstructions require software and they are typically, but not necessarily, done by the technologist on the raw data. The window will allow you to display any type of reconstruction differently, enabled to be able to optimize information. And we virtually always have to view each uh, CT reconstruction on several different windows to be able to maximize the diagnostic information that we can obtain from it. A window is how many Hounsfield units within those 256 shades are going to be displayed. Anything lower than the window is going to look black. Anything higher than that window is going to look white. The level is where is that window centered in the Hounsfield units. So the window is how many Hounsfield units are displayed within those 256 shades of gray, i.e. the range of soft tissue densities. And the level is where is the center of that window. So any densities which are lower than the level minus half of the window will be black and any soft tissue densities are greater than the level plus half the window are going to be white. So the wider the window, the larger that number, the greater range of tissue densities you're going to see, but the less contrast in the image. And the narrower the window, the smaller that number, the less range of densities you're going to be able to see. But there is going to be more contrast between the different densities. And generally speaking, the denser the tissues you want to look at, the higher the level needs to be, and the less denser tissues, the lower level. Although I've used a lot of numbers in this talk, I um, just want to reiterate that for most people these numbers are not important. I just want you to understand the various concepts of what we're talking about with window and level and why it's very important to look at every CT scan on these different windows to be able to see the abnormalities you're looking for. Thank you very much.